Good morning and welcome to our seed of encouragement that got the word and the word say house of doubt. I don't know how doubtful you are this season. I don't know those circumstantial questions that you are asking, the whys, the why that if there is God, why do I go through what I'm going through? If there's a God, why do I lose my son? Why did my son die? If there's God, why do I have broken marriage? If there is God, why am I sick? Why do God allow me to go through this abuse? Why did God watch my uncle abuse me so much? Why does God let this business scatter? Why does God bring, why do I have all these ups and downs? Why, 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 why you keep asking God, why? Why, why, why is all doubt? You know, Thomas, one of the disciples of Jesus Christ, doubted. He doubted the message. He has unbelief over the message of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He doubts. He was so confused. He was so doubtful that it was registered to him as Thomas the doubter. Doubting Thomas, that's what he's always known for. Thomas doubted what Jesus was saying, this message to the world. But did Jesus even come true? Jesus came true for him. Jesus walked through with his resurrection power, walked through a house with no window, with no door. He walked through the world and went to meet Thomas, to meet him at that place of his confusion at that place that he's doubting and when he went to him he said touch my hands put your hands through where i was nailed touch my feet put your hand through it so you can believe and the word of god said if we believe and don't doubt in our heart and we say to this mountain yonder die there today it will move and if we believe and we do not doubt that whatever we pray and ask for will be given to us. Nothing will be too difficult for us. Doubts. We all have doubts. We have doubts. Uh, Christian doubts, spiritual doubts. Doubt if my faith enough. Doubt do I believe enough. Doubt am I really doing what God said I should do. And all these doubts. He hold us up. One thing I want us to know today, that we should not let doubt intimidate us. Further, let doubt be the driving force for you to develop your strong faith. Because you know, having doubt is not having faith. Not having faith is unbelief. So as a Christian, you have the right to doubt. It's not a sin that you doubt. Is what you allow happen to you. Is what you allow that doubt happen to you is what becomes sin. Thomas was so doubtful even to, to the point that Jesus, even his fellow disciples told him that Jesus had resurrected from there. He said, no, he couldn't believe it until he will see. And Jesus said, blessed are those that believe and they have not seen. He said, you should believe. Believe the word of God. Believe the word that God has given you. Believe that word that God has put into you that's warning. Do not doubt it. Because when you doubt, then the word is not going to heal this process. Because doubt is what is going to derail the seed to germinate. Doubt is like when you plant a seed, then you, one day you not see the seed grow, you not see anything germinate on the soil. Then, then you go back to where that seed is, you dug it out. You check if the seed died or the seed is growing. By so doing, you have intercepted the conception of that seed. And so that seed is going, not going to do well as it was supposed to do if you haven't dis distracted the process. Doubt is what? It makes you worry. It makes you anxious. It, it makes you fearful. Thomas has to touch Jesus to, to believe. And when he believed, what did he do? He killed himself. Thomas has doubt over circumstances that have befallen him. He doubted who Jesus was, the power that he has, 
He just can't believe that this man that had so much power, that raised the dead, that does all the miracle, is going to let some people just capture him, kill him. He doubted the message of the resurrection, that Jesus said he's going to die for our sins. All those messed his head. He was an icon. He was somebody he hold on, he looked to, he, ad he, he admired, he, he worshipped. And he has saw things that he did. And, you know, he, 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 he killed Thomas that the, he was able to be captured just by a kiss. And that he break his heart. He didn't repent. If Thomas had repented, like Peter did, Peter denounced Jesus three times. Jesus even told him, you're going to denounce me three times. And he did, but he went back to Jesus in repentance and Jesus prayed for him if Thomas have went back then he allow his dad intimidate him that he thought the only way out was to do, cut it out what are you so doubtful about what are you so doubtful about we might never know the answers or the questions that we have I have questions too I have doubts too. We might never get the answer in this earthly life that we're living. We might get, the, we will get the answer when we cross over with God in his kingdom. Then we begin to understand things. Things will unfold. But I want to tell you, you have a savior that walk right through you. That knows what the doubt you have. That know the fears. There are no the questions that you have that you want to ask him. And he made a way. He walked right through to Thomas. He's walking right through you today. No matter where you are, no matter the darkness you are, no matter what it is that you have question for. You have question you don't have answers to. He has the key. He has the answer. He has the solution. Seek him, believe him, trust him. Just only say, believe. You don't need to see to believe. That's why they say faith is, if you have a faith of things you don't see, but you know spiritually it's going to come to be. Faith is you believing the word of God. Faith is you being Jehoshaphat when he, they, they told him that just worship that Jesus, that God will take care of this battle. And he set out praise worshippers. And when they praise, God did his thing. The word of Jericho fell down by praise. He said, walk right through it, march round that town seven times, and the world is going to fail. Obedience. Believe when you say obedience is better than sacrifice. You hear the word of God, you believe it, you obey it, and everything will come to pass. Why are you so doubtful? Why do you doubt that you're gonna receive healing? Why do you doubt that you're gonna have restoration? Why do you doubt that you're going to have a double for your lust? Look at Sarah. At what age did he still have a child? Because of doubt, he made Abraham had a, a child before the promised child. Look at Hannah. She prayed. She had faith. And she had a child. Look at Rachel. God still bless her. Even when Ahmed was, was mocking her. Look at Esther. She got favored. You know all the pains she has gone through. She's a slave here. But God favored her. God chose her. What make you think that God is not going to heal that cancer? What make you think that God is not going to bring restoration? What make you think that God is not going to fix their broken pieces? What make you think that God is not going to give you a kingdom idea to, to, to build up 
a generational business for the generation coming. What makes you think that God doesn't see that we should do? Yes, your name might not appear in any billboard. You might not be recognized in your congregation. You might not be recognized in your community. You might not be recognized even in where you work. You might not be recognized by anybody. But you are standing for the word of God. God sees you. He said he has inscribed your name in his palm of his hand. He knows. He saw the little, the widow, the widow's might. He saw that widow that threw all that little money in that offering. He said, that's the one he has said. He saw it. He saw that woman that goes to the well and odd hours because of all the vain accusing things that people say to her. He waited for her. He walked to her doubts. You have that Jesus. You have that God. Invite him. Repent and invite him into your life. He's there knocking and say, if you open the door, I will come in. Invite him in. What is the quest? What is the question? He has all the answer. Open the book. And God is going to um, open your eyes of understanding as you read and meditate on those books. And you begin to receive those answers of those questions that you are asking him. You have a high priest that is compassionate, that is not ignorant of your pain, your tears, your weeping. He said in Isaiah that he will give you a double for all your tears, for all your weeping, for all your money. He will give you joy. He will bring restoration. He said in Joel that he will restore the years the caterpillar and the caca woman of eating. He said he's going to bless you with a later day blessing. That doubt beneath it is the greatest faith that you have. If only you can use faith. If only you can believe and stop doubting. Ask God to help you with your unbelief. The father of the child has said, God, help me with my unbelief. Cry out to him to help you with your unbelief. Cry out to him to help you with your question to have. Cry out to him to help you with your doubts. So he can make a way with you. David said, I lift up my eyes upon the hills from where comes my help. He said his help comes from the Lord. He went, he said in Psalm 23 that he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He said he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemy and he anoints your head for your wisdom. Wisdom, ideas, answers to your question. Invite.